Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. Before heading into the studio, let's go outside for a little fun in the snow. What do big kids do when there's snow outside? <laughs> Apparently crunchy snow outside. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I invited you to join me in creating a series of little mini abstracts where we would have a chance to practice um, not just applying watercolors, but also different types of mark making and uh, seeing what kind of patterns we could create. To follow up that video, I thought that this week we could create a painting, just one little abstract landscape painting, using some of the elements from that painting process. I really loved working with the colors I used in the first painting quite a bit, and I was sort of excited to see what I could create using the same colors in a bigger painting process. And of course, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that for me, it's always about keeping it as simple as possible because the more simple I keep my process, the more fun and relaxed the process is. And that for me is very key to having a good intuitive creative process. As I did in the last painting, I'll be working with quinacridone rust and cobalt blue, and then I'll be mixing these two colors together to create other shades of color. To create the brown color I'm working with right now, I mixed about equal parts of the cobalt blue and the quinacridone rust together. I had quite a bit of water in my mix and so it's a very light wash. I do wish I had included just a little bit more pigment to make it a little bit darker, but that's just something I can keep in mind for another future creative process. Next I take a little bit more of that cobalt blue that I love so much and I mix a tiny bit of that brown color I created earlier into the cobalt blue and this is going to create a sort of turquoise um, looking blue <laughs> that I really love and I, I'm, I'm sort of playing with the idea here of creating a gradient of color moving up moving from the quinacridone rust to pure cobalt blue. So that's kind of what I have in the back of my mind. And so that's why I started off by mixing a little bit 
like equal parts of the cobalt blue with the quinacridone rust because I wanted to create that brown color. Now I want to start moving towards more blues and so I mixed a little bit less of that color in the cobalt blue. This color combination, just looking at these three colors on my piece of paper right now are such a feast for my eyes. I absolutely love the mix of these two colors together and the, the other unique colors that they create are also beautiful. So, oh, you know, I've been really wanting to play more with these Engram paints because I wasn't feeling overly comfortable with them. But the more I play with them, I really love their pigmentation and I love the colors I'm able to create with them. So yay for that. <laughs> oh, I really enjoy um, learning new color mixes. It, it really makes my heart very, very happy. At this point in my process, the colors on my paper should still be at least a little bit damp. And so I want to come back in with a little bit more pigment and I want to add little dabs of color here and there in the different uh, stripes of color that I've created so far in the painting.
At this point of the process, the paint on my paper is a little bit more on the drier side. So I'm adding a little bit of salt only at the very top because I think this might be the dampest area. And if I'm going to get any effects at all from the salt, it will probably be in that area. But I'm not overly optimistic that a whole lot's going to be created from adding the salt. So we'll see. I let the paper dry completely and then remove the salt and much to my surprise there was actually a lot more <laughs> um, a lot more marks left by the salt than I thought there would be. Now remember I said the paper was damp at that point and almost not comp well not completely dry but just a little damp so I wasn't expecting a whole lot and still I got some pretty neat effects. Um, now I am working on some arches watercolor paper and I do find that when I work on higher quality paper I tend to get more effects with the salt than I do when I'm working with a lower quality paper. So maybe that's why I was still able to get some um, of the effects of the salt. I'm not 100% sure but it's neat that something did happen. So now at this point I'm going to be using the same colors I worked with initially to just start adding some more marks to the different parts of my painting so that I can keep increasing the level of detail and continue making this little painting, this little abstract landscape more and more interesting. in this part of the painting process I'd probably be more likely to elect um, to play with my pens and markers to create some marks in my painting but I was feeling really eager <laughs> to give my iridescent paints a try and so I started to do just that um, so I'm going to be working with some Star Gold and some Tropical Sunrise Magic Green because I think these are the two colors that will go the best in this little painting. 
And even though I'm starting here, that doesn't mean I'm not going to come back in with my pens. I just kind of, I felt like I needed to test things out. And sometimes by doing this, it gives me a better idea of where I would like to come in with my pens and markers. Because these are usually my darkest values that I'm going to be putting in a, in a little painting. So adding them after I've added, I've added my iridescent colors is not necessarily a bad idea. When I follow my instincts and just do the next thing that comes to mind, I often am inspired for the next action I'll take in my creative process. And so even if it's not normally what I would have done to start working so early in the process with my iridescent paints, it was what my intuition called me to do. And I'm glad I did it because now I have an idea of what I want to do with my pens and my ink and so that's what I'm going to move on to doing next.
I'm feeling called to add a little bit more color in my painting, but this time I'm going to do so in the form of a darker value because I do feel like most of what's in my painting so far is pretty light and I do want to have some value contrast. So I'm using some indigo and I'm going to go into different sections of my painting and I'm going to add this color.
I feel as though I'm not overly chatty today and maybe this is because I'm feeling a bit tired so I apologize for being a bit more quiet than usual but I do hope the process speaks for itself and if it doesn't please make sure you reach out and ask questions I'm always more than happy to connect with you. I'm looking at this painting and I'm also feeling like I was very timid when it came to adding some dark value contrast and though I'm coming in here with my indigo and I'm adding these little dots I was being again uh, careful not to dip into the magic green that I had just added because I think it might have been still wet but I do think it would have been a bit better for me to put more of that indigo within the center of these little circles because there's not a whole lot of dark value contrast at the top of the painting and yeah I do think that's missing right now so I'll probably add a little bit more of that indigo color Sometimes removing the tape around the painting and getting rid of these rough edges is the thing that helps me decide whether or not the painting is truly finished. And as I'm looking at it from this new perspective, I definitely feel like I need to add more of that indigo in um, those little magic green circles. And I will do that even if I don't do it on camera. So I did exactly that, and yes, I definitely like it way better. I still think I could have added a little bit more dark value contrast in the overhaul in the overall painting, but I still love this painting quite a bit, and I like how it turned out. I borrowed some of the elements from uh, the painting I created a couple of weeks ago, added some new elements, and I feel like this mix of colors and marks is really really nice. I'm loving it. Hopefully you're feeling ready and inspired to create your very own little abstract landscape. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating! <laughs>